Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. And sometimes, as is the case today, I talk about something that is a little less uh, weird and might even be considered normal by some standards. Um, I am referring to a graphic novel memoir that I read. You don't encounter very many of those in the wild uh, that I read a part, as part of the book club that I've been, uh, been um, uh, doing with, with, with a friend. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about Good Talk by Mira Jacob, a memoir in conversations. So for those who don't know, Mira Jacob could be argued as a, a fairly new uh, author, given that she's only had uh, two of her books published recently, um, Sleep, Sleepwalkers and um, uh, this book, A Good Talk. Uh, but she has been writing for quite some time, just not getting uh, very many, very, very much of her work published um, or getting very many deals uh, in the process, uh, often doing freelance work and stuff like that. And uh, it would seem that part of this is due to the, the racism and the sexism that might be inherent in the, the publishing and writing industry, uh, which she, she does indicate to some degree in this book. And I, um, you know, I, I would be inclined to agree with her, uh, you know, uh, for the longest time, like the, uh, the writers or something like that, like they are, like as she points out, like they didn't want ethnic stories or anything like that, uh, that, that focused too heavily on, on one's um, ethnicity, as m maybe mainstream readers wouldn't, wouldn't understand the names or be able to pick them out or whatever. Something racist and weird, a weird explanation that doesn't really hold up under scrutiny. Uh, so, um, and also after 9-11, which she mentioned in this story, like, despite the fact that she was Indian, you know, there, there would still be that perceived prejudice of her because she was, uh, she, she was brown, uh, and, and looked like a Muslim, even though, uh, she, she wasn't. And so, uh, you know, quite a bit, she's been writing, uh, but hasn't got much published. I don't know too much else about her, but I am, uh, I'm in love with her, with her art style that she uses in this book and, uh, and her writing. And I, uh, um, spoilers, I'm going to definitely recommend this at the end of the video, but, uh, I, I, I loved reading it. And so without further ado, let's talk about Good Talk. I will do a, a little bit of summary, uh, analysis and we will move on from there. So as I mentioned before, Good Talk focuses on Mira Jacob, um, a, an Indian woman. Uh, she, uh, um, she was born, I think in the, the eighties or something like that. Uh, and she, um, the story focuses on her upbringing and her past and also flashes forward to the present, uh, as her son begins asking questions about race and, uh, where is, where Amer America is heading, um, at the time this was written. And so, um, uh, f primarily focusing on the past, uh, her, uh, her parents were in an arranged marriage. Um, and something that's, that's something that Mira's always sort of thought about how they've always seemed lonely and not really in love and they, they've stuck it out while so many of Mira's friends' parents got divorced. Uh, but Mira also notes that later in life uh, her parents, you know, actually started loving one another, uh, giggling to one another and holding hands and stuff like that. And uh, it, it forces Mira to question everything she really knows about her relationship, relationships at that point. And uh, so um, Mira goes into a bunch of stories, particularly talking about in elementary school, with her teacher, Miss Morrill, who was a strict Mormon teacher, who the students were afraid of. Uh, she talks about how uh, Morrill, um, Miss Morrill is assigned a, an essay contest uh, as part of the Amer Daughters of the American Revolution. And Mira won that contest and uh, Miss Morrill was very excited about her writing. And they were invited to a, a conference where um, Mira was going to talk about her essay and, and, and early American history. But Miss Morrill and her quickly found that they were given the wrong directions. Uh, and, and it turns out, um, strongly implied at least, that they were misled um, because they, someone found out that, that Mira was Indian. And, and so they might have taken offense to the fact that 
um, Mira was, was Indian. And so after the Miss um, Morrill allows uh, Mira to give the speech at the at the conference when they when they find the actual location, uh, she has a talk with with Mira saying, "Don't let anyone ever tell you that you aren't American. You and your parents are American, and don't let anyone else let you feel that you are less than." And it's a very beautiful uh, uh, chapter in, in this story that I that I def it, it's it's worth seeking out in my opinion um, she also talks about uh, her relationships in high school and in college how she's bisexual um, and how she um, uh, a lot of people like fetishized her this color of her skin uh, and that that's all they, they cared about they didn't really care about her personality they were only interested in the fact that they uh, they had sex or they were intimate with a uh, a person of color um, and that goes on for for quite some time to the point where it discourages Mira in in most of her uh, relationships um, but luckily she does manage to meet um, Jed, uh, a Jewish man along the way, who, um, he, it's not that he doesn't see the color of her skin, it's that, um, uh, he, he views her as a, as a normal American and loves her for her personality and, and all kinds of great things like that. Uh, and so they begin a, a, a short relationship, or not a short relationship, but a pretty long relationship that eventually results in marriage and a kid and, and happily ever after, even if there are some, you know, particularly big, like difficulties given that he is a white man and she is uh, an Indian woman. But one of the big things that happens in Mira's life is September 11, 2001, where the uh, terrorist uh, um, Al-Qaeda attacked the World Trade Center and Mira um, is sort of, uh, um, uh, she faces prejudice as a result of that, despite the fact that she's, of course, Indian, and it was a um, uh, Middle Eastern terrorist who, who did the World Trade Center attacks. Uh, so Mira is facing this prejudice, and, and uh, because, purely because of the color of her skin, rather than the fact that anyone knows that she's Indian or, or even cares that there's a difference. She's even accosted on the train, and nobody does anything about it. And she remarks how she's, she's forever seeing those pictures in her mind of the people who watched as she was uh, attacked by, by some man who was either incredibly racist or was going through some sort of mental health struggle at that point in time. He eventually gets married to Jed and, and things are pretty great. Um, uh, although she does note that Jed's parents seem to view her as less than and they don't actively speak out when uh, some of their friends view her as as the help or something like that. Uh, and she's already noting that there are some struggles with her parents that maybe Jed uh, doesn't want to actually acknowledge, um, even though her uh, her, par her parents-in-law are well-meaning. Uh, also at the time her father dies, uh, um, but before he does that he sort of has an, a shared epiphany with her where uh, he'll never get to uh, know her kids because she hasn't had a kid at that time. Um, the story then flashes forward to the Obama years, where um, uh, Mira and company note that uh, there's there, it's a struggle for Obama to be elected president, especially in a, in a racist America, uh, and like there seems to be more hills and struggles than if he were a white candidate. And um, very luckily, like he wins and everyone celebrates, and it, there's this feeling that America is in a different place. But then uh, her son Z is born, and the story flashes forward to to Ferguson. And at this point in time, he, he begins asking questions about Michael Jackson and, and race because he's very interested in, in those things. And as Ferguson continues to develop, develop he asks questions about you know uh, whether white people are scared of people like him, uh, whether his own father is scared of him because his father is white, uh, and what. It it means to be a person of color in America and Mira is finding out that she doesn't really have all those answers despite the fact that she's been dealing with racism all her life like how do you address that with a child um, and so as the as the years roll on and you get into the Donald T Trump like a candidacy and then presidency years like things become more of a struggle because on the news uh, her son is hearing all, all these things about uh, uh, how Donald Trump is saying that people of color are bad and he's saying extremely terrible things 
And uh, so the son is wondering, like, is he going to be elected president? What's going on there? And, and Mira is like, oh, no, it's not going to get that far. But it eventually does get that far. And this puts stress, um, you know, on her relationship with her husband because her husband doesn't really see that, that racism because he hasn't experienced it all of her life. And mixed with the fact that Jed's parents are going to vote for Trump, it just becomes a big old giant mess. And then... Uh, uh, Trump is actually elected, but and very fortunately at this time, some of her uh, books get published. Or and uh, a radio station in Boston actually asks if they can do a live read on air to you know introduce the world to Mira Jacob. And uh, when they give a, a blurb about her, uh, send it to her, they refer to her as an um, South Asian Indian or something like that, a word that no other Indians really use to describe themselves. And she tries to send them corrections, but they're like, oh, it, we have to distinguish between like Indian American uh, people who were. Uh, Native American, something like that, and people who are born in Asia. And she, she's forced to confront, like, this racism still exists because she is an American, but this radio station doesn't seem to acknowledge that she is. And again, like, her, she's trying to tell her, her husband's trying to tell her to ignore it, but she points out, like, how do I freaking ignore this when this is something that I've experienced all my life? That it's, it's a real struggle for her. And so um, I don't think it ends, like, on a... Uh, on a, on a clean note there. It's like that's still hanging in the air because that's still something that, that Mira is, is dealing with. And so at the end of the story, um, Mira, her husband, and her son are, are flying to uh, Florida to go um, hang out with Jed's parents because they they still want uh, Z, their son, to have a relationship with uh, with Mira, uh, with, with uh, his grandparents. But they're still dealing with the fact that uh, her, their parents are refusing to acknowledge the the hurt and the uh, the racism that Donald Trump is is inflicting upon America and, and all the the various problems with that and so uh, that's where the story ends on a bit of a hopeful note for Z because Mira notes that uh, at least Z is asking these questions and he's asking questions and he wants to know more about racism and and where he stands in society that means he he has enough hope to want to change the future and hopefully hopefully he can and that's uh that's where the story ends there in terms of analysis there is a bit to talk about with this story uh one thing that that pops up is the difficulties of navigating a discussion of race it's already very challenging because as um as as Mira notes like uh, uh, in the story, most people are sleepwalking. Most white people, in particular, are sleepwalking. And when you bring up the the um, the discussions of, of race and, and racism and the, the systemic oppression that exists in America, that it's it's very challenging to figure. Uh, it's very challenging just because you know most people are sleepwalking, and so if you try to wake a sleepwalker, you know that's it's not necessarily true, but they they might be angry. And so you know if you wake up somebody who's been sleepwalking about racism it, it's it there they might not own up to it they might not want to have a discussion about it but it is something that you have to talk about so how do you talk about it and more importantly than that how do you go about talking with a child about this because Miro doesn't want to lie to Z Miro wants Z to properly know about what the world is like but he's a very young child so what do you tell him how do you tell him that this that racism exists in America in a way where he's not going to like have nightmares or become totally discouraged with with moving forward. Uh, that's a question that Mira has to deal with, and she, I, I think she's somewhat successful in that she doesn't lie to him and and she tries to help him understand in terms that he can understand. But uh, he's getting so many other messages from the media, and uh, Jed's parents are like, "Oh, don't let him see the news," but. The news is everywhere. Like you can't. If the, if the president is saying racist things, everyone's going to report on those racist things. You you can't stop your child from finding out that racism exists in the world if it's so front and center on the national stage. And so she has to she has to weigh she has to find a way to not mislead him. She has to answer the tough questions and she has to um, help him understand what to expect from the world, uh, all while trying to be uh, in her view and, and judge you a good parent so there's a good quote that i would like to read to you from this wait he asked you that if i was afraid of him so i told him no and that sometimes the news is hard to understand our son what our son asked if i was afraid of him yes what do we do i don't know and that's the, the dilemma uh, as jed and and mira are talking like they have to deal with the fact that like um uh in this interracial marriage, like their son might might have some some 
thoughts about the fact that his father is white and his mom is brown. And since he looks like his mother, like there might be some questions of like, is my father afraid of me? Is he one of those people I should be worried about? Do I have to worry about my grandparents and stuff like that? Uh, and there's no easy answer on how to do this. Like it's something I've never had to think about. And for most of my life, I didn't think about. But if you're a person of color, maybe this is a regular discussion you're having, especially in 2021 when uh, there's so much news going on out there about um, people in color being killed by, by police officers and being being oppressed by the state. Uh, there's there's a lot going on and there's not there's no easy answers. And so I really feel for Mira in this moment as she's as she's trying to help her son navigate these issues. Another thing we're talking about is the lifelong, uh, the lifetime of racism that Mira is experiencing throughout the story. It happens in her dating life when people fetishize her, the color of her skin. Uh, yes, that is actually racism. E even if you like, oh, I, I like, if you date black people because you like the color of their skin, like that's still racism. Just, just clearing that up out there. Also, 9/11, um, experiencing prejudice based on the color of her skin. The Obama years and the worry that uh, one, one uh, slip up and he's not going to become president. President, uh, a much more uphill battle than other presidents because um, they're white and he's he's black and then also dealing with with Ferguson and, and what that could mean for her son uh, in the future uh, the, the most clear example of this is the radio um, uh, um, which I described earlier, uh, how the radio uh, host didn't seem to want to acknowledge that she was an, uh, an American, even though she was born here, and, and like she's very clearly an American citizen. And uh, the way he describes her, it, it's it's not it's clear that he's not on that side. And so um, there's another quote that I would like to read to you here. You talk like I'm some guy from the 50s who has never thought about this before. I talk to you like someone who doesn't think about it because you haven't had to. Like you're someone who just told me to be confident. Jesus Christ, I was trying to help. This guy sucks and you're letting him derail you. This guy is my whole life. He, me figuring out how to get past this guy is all I ever do. You think this is derailing? Shut up. And so that's a conversation that Mira and her husband uh, Jed are having, where he's trying to convince her, oh, like just just get past this guy, like you can you can do that. But like she can't get past him if all she's ever encountered in her life are people like uh, like the the radio station dude, um, just whether they're well-meaning or not, just doing microaggressions against her. It reminds me a lot of Invisible Man, where it's just one thing after another, after another, after another for the narrator. And if it, again, if it was just one off, like you could, you could deal with that. But if this is a regular thing for you, these are constant obstacles that you have to jump over in order to have a normal American experience. And if you're, if you're doing that, that can be very stressful. And so uh, this light, again, I feel for, for Mira here as she, as she deals with this lifetime of of racism and, and, and struggling just to just to eke out a living in life. Another thing we're talking about is uh, racism and bigotry via minorities. Can minorities be racist? Mira asked that question pretty early on in, in the story, and uh, uh, a good example of this is, is Jed's parents. They, they're Jewish, and they've, they've experienced anti-Semitism through their life, and you would think, oh, Jewish individuals couldn't be racist. But in their case, they're, they're, they support Donald Trump regardless or because of his, uh, of his racism and his his terrible behavior, often justifying it. We see, we saw that all through the presidency. All pe either people hand waved the racism, or they ignored it altogether. Uh, and so you have to wonder: Can Jed's parents be considered racist? I think because they're white individuals, maybe that might be indicative that they could be racist. But um, the light becomes a bit more blurred when you consider Indians and, and racism. Um, she touches upon this a little bit as she uh, as she notes like light skin versus dark skin and, and how in India if you have dark skin that's that's uh, uh, maybe indicative that you uh, you're a maid or you're you're less well off and men typically avoid the the dark-skinned women of India in favor of the uh, the light the light fair-skinned women, um, which is seen as as more uh, desirable uh, there. And so um, the, the, uh, her her son Z does ask a question: Can Indians be racist? And she um, Mira t attempts to say that yes, but also no. Uh, in America, there there's no the Indian Americans don't really hold 
the power. And so in order to be racist, there needs to be that element of power. And uh, so the, uh, in America, they can be jerks, they can be bigoted, but they can't be racist. Whereas in India, there's a whole entire caste system and a whole bunch of racism that she doesn't really get into in this story. And so uh, it's um, one of my issues is that she she um, she touches upon this a little bit, but she doesn't. She never comes right back. She never brings it around um, or or provides you know more context for it. And so it's an interesting idea, a lot to think about. But um, uh, we're not. And she doesn't go into it like uh, as much as it's needed. I, I guess uh, uh, still a lot to think about how um, people we view as as minorities and and. Uh, incapable of bigotry can be can hold bigoted views um, which can be detrimental and it also goes to show that uh, human beings have a psychological need to categorize like even if we got rid of race overnight and everyone was was the same that we would still find ways to categorize and, and discriminate against people because that's just how our our brains work unfortunately it helps us categorize systems and and objects uh, but our brain takes it a step further and starts categorizing people and that's how we we get a racism and so so, um, very interesting ideas, not as developed as I would like it to be, um, but still interesting questions posed um, and, and highlighting the some issues that exist in India as well. And the last thing I want to talk about with this story is the art. Uh, Mira Jacobs does the art, uh, Mira Jacobs, sorry, does the art, and it's incredibly beautiful. Uh, I wish I could show you, I'll, I'll try to put them around here. Uh, I, I read this on my Kindle, so I don't, I can't necessarily, uh, um, uh, take pictures of the art in a, in a meaningful way, but I'll try to find them on Google so I can um, show you there. But uh, it, it's, I really like the art style because it's it's cartoon figures superimposed over realistic backgrounds, whether it be New York City or the sky or, or something like that. Um, it, it, it looks very interesting and I, I admire how my, Mira, Mira Jacob was able to, uh, you know, not only write a decent story, but also make this, this fantastic art uh, of people who, who, who come from her lives, whether it be her throughout the years or her husband Jed or her son or, or anyone like that. Uh, so, so definitely worth, uh, worth checking out for the, for the illustrations too. So those are my thoughts on Good Talk by Mira Jacob, a pretty wonderful book. I am definitely going to recommend it. I love the conversation she has about racism and oppression uh, and wanting to have those discussions but, under, uh, but not really understanding how you uh, get to those discussions without angering white people or or confusing your child or you know talking across purposes with with your husband who is very well meaning but uh, hasn't had the experiences that you do uh, so a lot worth worth exploring in this story um, definitely worth checking out I recommend it to you out there uh, if you read this before or simply want to comment on something that I said please do so below uh, remember I'm not an expert on Indian culture or anything like that so please feel free to educate me if I if I messed up here. Um, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about Mira Jacob, a wonderful author. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh, conversation-y travels. Farewell.